so all friends welcome to my channel family gaming so today i'm going to explain you that is the eight standard biology and this is ic ic syllabus for biology first chapter read the circulatory fluid in our body so this is chapter is about the blood as you all know you may have learned in your classes that blood by with the help of blood only we are living it gives us oxygen and water it supplies all the minerals and what all the things food to eat the energy to our body and what all you uh, what all the things you can learn in this chapter is you can learn counting of pulses finding the average noting charge after exercise and rest and you can know about different types of blood cells blood group transfusion of blood and more you can know about blood groups and blood transfusion and you can know about rbc and wbc functions of the blood also you can know so these are the things you will know about you will learn about you will learn in this chapter so first of all human circulatory system as you all know we human and animals we both need food and oxygen for living we eat food we breathe oxygen by that only we are living like that only we we also live some of the harmful waste products waste we will live and animals also and the intake of food of oxygen food and oxygen the food and oxygen that we take and the removal of the waste they are carried out by a transport system there is a transport system so in this transportation that is carried it contains the transport in this transportation system there is transport system there is mainly in this transportation there is mainly blood is found you can see blood by blood only is supply all the things to our body and the blood is transported to the all the parts of the body uh, and it is pumped uh, pumped out by heart as you all know uh, heart pumps out the blood so the to and fro motion of the blood that is carried out by the heart that is called as blood circulatory system so the to and fro you may have learned in your circulatory motions in motions what is to and fro the tone like that only the to and fro movement the to and fro movement front and back movement of the so blood will go and it will come back and again it will be purified and it will go like that only to and fro movement will be happened and the, in the heart in the heart it is carried out in the heart and this is called as blood circulatory system next so our circulatory system it consists of blood vessels blood and heart together they all transport the blood to our various parts of the body and the blood first flows through the blood vessel and then it uh, flows regulated by the heart then it goes uh, out by the heart and the heart acting like a pump pushes and uh, receives so the pump heart pumps the blood and also it receives the blood again the way of blood, blood that has supplied the oxygen uh, to the other parts of body and it has come back to the heart it receives it receives the blood uh, to and from the whole body through the vessels it receives the blood that have uh, gone in the whole body and come back to the heart it receives from the vessels so the blood so as you know it is red in color so you may have know when you get a small type of scratch in your skin um, a little bit injury that time you can see a little bit of blood that is that time you may have seen it is red in color you may all already know so it consists two parts the one is plasma the liquid part it is like liquid that uh, cover after injury it will cover our skin so that the blood clotting will happen there plasma will make it clot so that the blood more more blood may not go next corpuscle so it is the cell cellular part it is the cellular part of our body next the plasma is in yellowish in color and most of it is water the plasma most of it plasma is in water and the remaining 10% plasma 90% of plasma is water 10% consist of some nutrients like food vitamins minerals and blood protein we call it as blood protein which includes some of the antibodies which fight against some of the diseases and that protect our body from some of the more diseases the antibodies and fibrinogen it helps our blood to clot sometimes fibrinogen when injury it helps it to clot 
next weight product like your etra and carbon dioxide will leave out from our uh, body through blood it will transport to our heart and heart will listen it to the lungs the carbon dioxide and it will go out and the waste food will waste will go to the lung, lungs and then it will go to the uh go it as urine next horm hormones the chemical messengers so Hormones they are the chemical messenger which help us uh, our body to coordinate with our brain for, uh, so that we can continuously do our body function that are required and blood test so blood test they are saltist due to some of the minerals it has and some of the sodium chloride it has so that's so why it is like salt in taste if you taste sometimes blood next the corpus of the corpuscles or the blood cells they are of three types the corpuscle or the blood cells they are of three types red blood cell white blood cell and blood cells red blood cell first let us know about the red blood cell so red blood cell or cellular they are like cellular and they are like disc shape like a disc shape they are and these cells initially had a nucleus to start with so here you can see the red blood cells red blood cells like uh, disc shape you can see and they have nucleus and also it you can see it is like in cellular circular shape and they have nucleus initially had a nucleus to start with but then uh, but they lose the nucleus while the maturation happens into the blood they lose the nucleus so the red blood cells or we see they are about four 4.5 to 5.0 millions in one cubic meter a millimeter of blood in one cubic millimeter of blood you can see around 4.5 to 5.0 millimeter of blood you can find in that in that one millimeter of blood and they are produced by our bone marrow the central halo part of the bone by the bone marrow you can see the blood they are produced and have a they have blood have a red blood cell have a lifetime of 120 days 120 days it has the lifetime and their red color is uh, due to the they have some of the iron and protein compounds they are called as the hemoglobin so the hemoglobin that acts as the oxygen carrier so hemoglobin that carries the oxygen to the all the parts of our body through the blood so that's why blood has the hemoglobin and that's why we can say that red blood cell or blood carries the oxygen to the all the part of the body so now you learned how blood carries oxygen to all the part of body through hemoglobin next now you learned about the red blood cell now it's time for white blood cell so the white blood cells they are called as leukocytes they are called as leukocytes they are more the white blood cells are formed more than the red blood cells and have a distinct they have more nucleus and they are much less in number they are much less in number they have around 5000 to 8000 in per cubic millimeter of blood you can find around 5000 to 8000 meter 8000 small white blood cells and the uh, white blood cells they can capture and destroy the germs so they recapture the germs and they uh, the disease or germs and they destroy uh, that uh, try for the our uh, that try to hurt our body or injure our body thus they protect us from the diseases also we can see and also we can say they provide us the immunity so the white blood cells are basically there are two types depending upon the presence or absence of the granules so granular cats uh, granulocytes and agranulocytes so granulocytes they are further distinguished into nucleophils eosinophils and basophils this you will learn in your higher classes just remember the names while agranulocytes they are classified into monocytes and lymphocytes now now you learned about the oil blood cells so these names you remember that's all you will learn it you will learn about it in your higher classes you will learn now you learned about red blood cells white blood cells now the final thing of the corpus skulls or the blood cells the final one is the third one is platelets they are in the round in shape and the small they are very small in size small in size there are about two point there are two to three lakh in you can see they are two to three lakh we can platelets are present in the 
millimeter of some cubic per cubic millimeter of bread and the platelets that have they these platelets helps in the clotting of bread uh, when injured as i said when injured you may happen you may see the bread they are red and also you can see after sometimes they may be clotted there may, will be no uh, going uh, the bread will be not going out they will be clotted that is because the platelets will come there and it will clot that place it will make the bread to clot so that more bread that are present in that place will not go out so these are the work of platelets it clots the bread uh, bread where it is injured it clots their bread and it stops the uh, running out of the bread from the body next so in certain diseases the number of platelets uh, in certain more diseases the number of platelets will get down you can see in viral fever or many diseases they may say check your platelets and they may say your platelets is less this is because uh, like dengue fever that is one of such diseases in which your number of platelets get reduced to 25 to 30 thousand per cubic meter it should be around so then they should be around two to three lakh per cubic uh, cubic meter or in the blood but now it decreased to 25 to 30,000 due to dengue fever and the body shows bleeding symptoms there may be some bleeding symptom nearly uh, bleeding symptoms Delhi and many other uh, countries lose a number of lives there are many countries sometimes they lose their number of lives they lose their people due to this dengue fever next now you learned about the three types of plate the bread blood cell white blood cell and platelets what are their functions how it protects and uh, till how much span and what is it work now function of plate now we will these all comes when it combines it becomes blood so function of plate what all it does so the plate as you know so now let us come to our topic function of blood so the blood transport the digested food nutrients so the blood transport the digested food nutrients from the our intestine to those organs where they are either stored or utilized so it's uh, the blood sends our the food nutrients where the uh, to the organs that can store that nutrients next it carries oxygen from our lungs to the tissues carbon dioxide from our tissues it brings back to the lungs and they are spoke on uh, uh, send it out the oxygen when it will be breathed out now also it carries some of the waste products to our kidney so that they may be removed from our body through urine and next it maintains our balance in the tissue water balance it takes the excess of water if any it waters water from our blood or tissues from uh, blood takes excess of water from the tissues and send it to the kidney and from our tissue or it also provide them some of the water if it is required from our from the uh, very water is grown it regulates our blood temperature sorry body temperature by distributing the heat that are produced in some of the tissue it distributes the heat to the different parts of the body so that there may be little bit heat in our body and also it uh, protects our body against some of the diseases and it prevents the bleeding here uh, by making the blood clotting as you know it uh, some of the platelets will do this work now now you learned about the function so they may ask you about your functions in your uh, questions so remember this remember about red blood cell white blood cell and rbc sorry platelets and remember about the function of the blood now after these things no blood vessels so now we learned about the blood blood or function of the blood types of blood now what are the blood vessels so the blood is carried to different parts of the body through a tubular like tubular blood vessels there are three kinds of blood vessel muscle like this you can see muscle it is like it is like when it is like capillary they are uh, big in size now after this the blood vessels are three types uh, blood vessels are three types they are the artery veins capillaries the artery artery is vessels 
is that carries the blood away from the heart the artery takes the blood away from the heart and uh, it's applies to the other parts of the body and it has thick elastic and muscular walls the artery here you can see artery in the heart picture it is like thick and it sends the blood out from our body to the other parts rest of the uh, part of the body and next is vein the next uh, blood vessel is vein the vein is a vessel which takes the blood from an organ from the organ the where blood is supplied it takes there and it brings back to our heart and it is like a thin muscular wall and the blood is in the flow uh, in it flows smoothly so uh, and now veins so veins uh, here you can see the veins here you can see veins that carries the blood from our other parts from our part of the body and bring back to the heart now what are the difference let us see it may they may ask about the difference uh, between arteries and veins in your class exam or any exam so you may have to learn it is basics uh, about heart you should learn this is all the basic things so arteries and veins arteries they carry blood to, uh, to the uh, blood out from away from the body uh, sorry heart and veins they brings the blood from all the parts of the body to the heart next arteries they have thick and more muscular vessels uh, and uh, the veins they have very thin like thin and less muscular vessels uh, sorry vessels sorry walls and arteries they carry oxygenated blood from our heart and veins they carry this oxygenated blood from our on the parts of the body and bring it to the heart and the blood flows with jerks and undergoes uh, they have great force as it is the heart pumps the blood with a force to bring out the blood and the blood flows smoothly in the veins because it brings the blood um, inside back to the heart from all the parts of the body and the arteries they are usually deeply placed and veins they are not placed more specifically or more deeply and next capillaries so capillaries they are the terminal branches of they are by branches of artery which rejoins to form a vein so the uh, artery rejoins to form a vein and the capillary is a way it is like a very narrow tube the capillary are very narrow tube whose walls have a single layer the capillary walls have a single layer of cells and it has no muscles the capillary wall don't have muscles although the walls of the capillary they are like very thin very thin they are and yet an exchange of nutrients we can see in the earth wall and waste minerals the waste products and gases can be take place between the blood and the blood fluids due to that capillaries so in this picture you cannot see the capillaries no problem you will see capillaries in our next upcoming chapters so heart the pumping organ so the heart it is a muscular organ as you know and it beats non stop throughout one's life through a out of lifetime you can see if you keep hand in your heart you can see little bit heart beat if and uh, it has four chambers the two are the upper ventricles two are the lower ventricles and it receives the blood from the other parts of the body heart receives the blood from the other parts of the body and then pump out it to the into the uh, lungs uh, for purification and the oxygenated blood from our heart it is supplied to the other part of the body uh, and uh, again the blood that is sent to the kidney it is again purified and it is supplied from our heart through the again all the parts of the body and in this way the blood passes twice through the heart twice because once heart supplies a blood to all the parts of the body again it comes out back to the heart with the oxygenated where it becomes the oxygenated blood and again it is supplied to the lungs there it is purified and again it is sent to the Uh, heart and again it is goes to the all the parts of the body so that's why it is called as double circulation because two times it goes from out to the heart and comes back to the right supplied to the uh, two times it goes to the heart and it is supplied to the all the parts of the body so this is a diagram of the heart you should practice it very well it may help in your higher classes also they may there will be about heart in your more heart how you will learn about more things about heart in your higher classes so practicing it is most important first now double circulation pulmonary circulation we shall say first one 
In this circulation, the blood flows from the right ventricle into the vascular system of the lungs. From the right ventricle, it is close to the lungs and gets oxygenated. There, the oxygenated blood is made oxygenated and then returns to the left article through pulmonary veins and it is supplied to the, all the parts of the body. And systematic circulation. In this circulation, the blood flows from the left ventricle, from left ventricle to the body parts and returns to the heart in the right ventricle it comes next the heart contracts to push out the blood to various parts of the body and then when after pushing it gets relaxed to receive back the blood well uh, so while uh, heart beat when it beats that time it, so it tries to supply the blood when it gets relaxed it tries to take the blood both these phases occur in the rhythmic manner one after the other and together they form a cardiac cycle we say when heart beats it sends it sends out the blood with the pressure and when heart relaxes it takes the blood from the body this is called as the cardiac cycle now so as you know the double circulation of the blood in the body now you learned so overall the contraction phase of the heart is called as systole and uh, when it contracts and uh, when it becomes um, heart speeds and when it relaxes when the heart relaxes the relaxing phase is called as the diastole or dilation next the right auricle opens into the right ventricle and the left auricles open into the left ventricle their opening in between or they are guarded by the valves the valves between the left article and the left ventricle they have the walls in between them so the valves allow the blood to flow only in one direction in only one left ventricle means left ventricle left article means left article where it want to go only in that side it leaves the it uh, allows the blood the valves allows the blood to go next hepatic portal circulation what is this hepatic portal circulation let us know so now you learned about the heart, how it supplies the blood and the double circulation you learned. These things you learned about the heart till now. Now we learned about the hepatic circle portal circulation. So it is circulation of food laden blood. So food laden blood from intestine to the liver and then from liver to the heart. So blood from food uh, what we food take the nutrients from that food as you know our blood takes energy to the all the parts of the body the nutrients from that food come to the liver from there it is sent to the heart and heart uh, puts that uh, nutrients to the blood and liver monitors the substance before passing them into the body and then liver again monitors that substance whether it has nutrients it is supplying weakly or not and then it is separate all the body uh, all the parts of the body so excess glucose is retained in the form of glucogen in soluble form so excess of nutrients or glucose it is returned back in the insoluble form and the excess amino acid is break down by the liver if it is there any excess of glu uh, amino acids in that blood the liver will watch that and it will break into the into that uh, breakdown uh, the liver will break down and harmful chemicals are detoxified the harmful chemicals it should not go to our play our body so that's why they are detoxified in our body so from body the blood will come here in a picture and from lungs here it will come and valves will open it and from body here from body from down it will come and here auricle picture b also shows that only and picture c shows here from uh, to the body it will goes here you can see here the blood goes from the body and here from the lungs it will goes to the lungs and here the ventricle contracting this is called the ventricle cutting contract uh, sorry contracting this is auricle means auricle will take the blood from the body or from the lungs ventricle supplies the blood to the body or to the lungs like this auricle remember oracle what it does it take uh, it takes the blood and uh, blood from the body and the lungs that blood supplied from the lungs the deoxygenated uh, blood that are going to the lungs it made it uh, the lungs make that blood as oxygenated uh, it puts the oxygen to the blood uh, that uh, we took 
we take a breath the oxygen that we take it will go to the lungs so the lungs will ta- take the blood it will put the breath the energy in that is present in the oxygen and it will supply it to the uh, arterial Uh, and then in ventricle it is sent out to the body it is sent to the body and also it is sent to the lungs the waste blood that comes from the body the oxygen blood it is um, uh, sent to the body through pulmonary artery and outer sent the uh, blood to the other parts of the body and uh, this was the about the how blood taken in blood supply uh, taken in by the heart and in auricle it takes the blood in ventricle it supplies out the blood now blood circulation how it happens now we learned about the heart and about the other things of the blood blood circulation but how circulation happens let us know so the blood returning from the body to the heart is received in the right auricle that is right auricle this is right auricle it is received and it contains some of the carbon dioxide carbon dioxide that are present in the parts of the body the blood takes it and bring back to the heart then simultaneously the oxygen rich blood that are come from the lungs the oxygen rich blood the rich blood that are come from the lungs they are pushed or they are received in the left auricle then in the left auricle here here left auricle it is from lungs it is coming now here left auricle it is there it is received and then when auricle contracts they forces the blood into the two ventricles so when auricle contracts they forces the blood into the two ventricles now the ventricle contracts and they forces the blood into the two large or auricle two large auricle uh, uh, sorry auricle not two large arteries they pushes that blood then and on going into the lungs and the other going uh, going into the body parts so the pulmonary artery sends the waste the blood that are come from the other parts of the body to the lungs and the aorta where, where i showed the aorta of in that picture see the aorta of ventricle sends the blood to all, all to the lungs and our uh, lungs and other parts of the body where i showed in the uh, pc picture in the last page it sends straight to the outer sends the blood to the all the parts of the body and the pulmonary artery art, artery sends the, the blood to the lungs now the pulse so you may have here uh, seen sometimes doctor will check the i will check your pulse doctor will say what is meant by that let us know no no so the arteries have elastic muscle muscular walls the arteries have elastic muscular walls that explain expand every time when the blood is forced through them because there are happened some of the contraction in the heart so that's why they are uh, every time they are expanded every time when the blood is forced from the heart to send and the contraction of the heart muscles they produce some uh, produce a sound a heartbeat you can see you can find when you see heartbeat you can hear if you keep uh, your ear if you are here here in some of the person's heart you can hear heartbeat or you can feel when you keep your hand so this is what doctor listen to when they put uh, when the doctor puts the stethoscope to your near your heart they feels they hear heartbeat as your heart is working or not what uh, what happening and you can count your heartbeat by feeling your pulse also uh, which is throbbing of arteries each time when blood is pumped into them by the left ventricle when it is when blood is pumped this throbbing this throbbing can be easily felt by pressing your finger you can feel whether it is pushing or not you can feel, press your finger where uh, you can feel some of the pulse moving of blood and this uh, throbbing can be easily felt by pressing your finger or hand gently over an artery then has come up superficially such as uh, if you can see one of on your wrist along the side of the thumb normally the heart beats at an average of 72 times per minute per minute it beats around 72 times if you want you can test it if you can keep hand on your heart and you can test it like this you can see here you have to keep normally like this and you have to check whether it is uh, yes it is you can feel that force of blood or not 
No, the doctors count the pulse of an ailing person to get an idea about the patient heartbeat. To get an idea of patient heartbeat, so faster heart. So beaten is usually an indication of hypertension or fever. So if he feels the pulse is very fast, then if it is the pulse or the blood is in the going in very fast, the pulse is very much fast. If the doctor found it. Then you can, yeah, the doctor can say that you have hypertension or fever. That's why it is going very fast. If the pulse is very low, rate it indicates poor function of the heart. The heart is very functioning very much low, and it is not giving, it is not beating very heartbeat should beat 72 times in a minute, but it is not beating 72 times because here it is feeling very much low. The pressure is low, so there is a problem or issue in the heart so the pulse can also be measured by using a stethoscope you can keep a stethoscope also the doctor can see the pulse so a stethoscope is an instrument that amplifies the sounds of the heartbeat it takes the uh, it helps to us uh, to hear the sounds of the heartbeat and used to hear the sounds of the heartbeat in the tail in the chest by placing uh, the stethoscope in the chest you can hear the in the chest in the appropriate place if you are to place place in the appropriate place you have to place that stethoscope to hear the heartbeat next blood groups so you may have heard um, see when you give for a blood test in that you may if you've seen that paper you may see the blood group your a b o a b blur many other blood groups you may have seen your blood group you may have seen you are there so what is that let us know. So, Carl Landstener, who in 9900, in 1900, he identified the different types of blood groups are found in the humans. They have the humans have different types of blood groups was found by Carl Landstener. So, these blood groups are differentiated on the basis of the protein. So, on the basis of the protein that are found on the surface of the red blood cells. What are the protein they are found on the surface of the red blood cells? We can find on that type the blood groups we can see. That blood group we can see on that person. There are two types of blood groups. Uh, two types of antigens or we can say proteins A and B. So a person, a, so sorry, a person blood group, if it is A, then it is antigen is present in his red blood cells. And if it is B, such person, red blood cells, you persons, A and B, if the antigen is B. So, So, see, such if a person whose red blood cells is both AB, blood group uh, type belongs to the AB, and those persons whose red blood cells do not have an antigen, who that person who do not have any antigen or proteins, have the blood group of O, O blood group, they have no antigen. So, matching of blood group. See, matching of blood group. So, blood group of donator. So, a person who if he has a blood group of A, you should get a blood group of A from person A only. You can't uh, give a blood, take a blood from A person a B or A. He can take blood, he can supply the blood to A or AB. But AB, but he cannot supply the blood, he cannot, means he cannot donate the blood to B or O. Okay, like that only B group person cannot uh, donate the blood to A and O but he can donate the blood to B and AB because AB is universal in universal anyone can donate that or anyone can take that blood if he has a less less blood group and AB O cannot take AB a B cannot take and A cannot take because AB only A cannot take A can take but AB but uh, any per uh, a, a for AB blood group person any persons like who having blood group A or B, who have A group, blood group or B blood group, they can give him, give blood to him, but he cannot give blood to them. And also he cannot give blood to the O group people who have blood group of O. And O blood group 
any they can give universal donator we can say them because they can give the bread to uh, donate the bread to a group or b group or a b group or they can give to the o group them for who have same bread group they can give to them what do you conclude from the above matching that is a group can be given to the person with a and a b group so a group blood can be given to only a person who have blood group of same a group and a b group only and b group also only the person who has having b group of bread and a b group of bread we can give the bread to them and a b can only be given to only a b only it is given no other persons can take the a b group blood and o we can give one to the every person it is universal donator anyone can take that blood now so now blood transfusion what is this blood transfusion let us know now we learned about the blood groups about heart and about many things till now we have learned about different types uh, different things about the hearts how it sends the blade how it receives the blade what all the th things happens and about the how to draw you have now till now learned no after all these things no blade transfusion what is this blade transfusion let us know one minute so okay blade transfusion sometimes uh, during a uh, operation or an accident when excess of bleeding takes place when during see sometimes there may be an accident or there may be an operation they may be going on and they may be giving some blood and sometimes due to late of operation or due to some time of our taking time of operation do it's taking some time to do that operation to that surgery they may take some time that time they may be going off going uh, blood will be going excess or due to accident there may be going off excess of blood and the patient needs a transfusion to regain a loss of blood so he needs some uh, transfusion to regain the loss of blood that he had got at that time in such a situation ha kinda So loss of blood. So in such a situation, the blood is taken out from the healthy person with his consent, and also if the blood group of the person. So from the healthy person, they take the blood, and and with help of his kind, he he likes to give, he can give, and also if the blood groups of the both the persons is matched, then only they will give that blood. and the donated blood is also tested for any infection because uh, his infection blood is never transfused so that to avoid more damage to the patients as there may be happening to the surgery for them or it is due to accident is happened more injury may, ha may happen due to the disease it if it is contain diseases so the collected blood is then uh, transferred to the patients and the transfer of blood from the donator to the recipient Also from the donor to that patient is called as the blood transfusion, and it is important to know the matching of the donor blood with that of the recipient. Otherwise, the there may be red blood cell will stick to each other and may endanger uh, the lives of that patient. So this sticking is due to the reaction between the antigens because they both are different. Bleds may fit, make uh, become different blood. They it will be stick. Uh, it will be having different antigens. So here you learned about what are the antigens. Here antigen bleds. It does not have antigens. A and A B. A and B have antigen. So it is found in donor's blood and antibodies present in the recipient blood. So that's why it may happen some problem issues. So that's why they will check the. sticking uh, uh, blood sticking of the red blood cells is sticking or not in the donor person who person gives the blood now here a girl child is being given a blood transfusion you can you should also ask the blood donor ah ಬಂದೆ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ 
Rhesus as factor. Besides the ABO system of blood uh, group, there is another system that is called as Rhesus as factor. So it is a special factor which has first found by Rhesus monkey. The monkey is Rhesus with a species called Rhesus as monkey in that they are found. People who have this factor are called as orange positive and those who do not have this factor are called as orange negative. So in this whole human population, a large portion, 90% of people, they have orange positive and only 10% of people have orange negative blood they are transferred in their persons so the blood of this recipient develops antibodies against the orange plus factor and the orange antibody survives for a few months the orange body antibody survives for a few months in such a case if an individual is given a second transfusion of the orange positive type of blood after a short interval his antibodies will react with the with that transferred blood and they may cause him some problem so you should not give another time a blood supply a transfusion for a blood transfusion for a second time for a orange positive person finally blood pressure so the pressure exerted by the blood on the walls of the arteries while following through them is called blood pressure and there are three two types of blood pressure the upper limit the Systole, systolic pressure of ventricle that contracts that helps the uh, helps us to pump the blood into the artery and pulmonary artery and the lower limit it is called as the diastolic pressure in and is the minimum pressure when blood flows from the articles articles to the ventricles and the instrument that is used to find about the blood pressure is called as the spiko momentometer so the two normal level of blood pressure of a healthy person or systolic diastolic 120% systolic and 80% diastolic a rise in blood pressure of 140 to 90 is known as the hypertension high blood pressure it is high pressure pressure and below and if it is below the normal is called as the hypertension so if it is below 120 and 1 and 80 it is called as the low pressure so elderly people have a tendency of having slightly higher blood pressure level because they may be working and they have some pressures nowadays blood pressure are at both levels now uh, develop which people can keep they are there uh, so nowadays handy machines machines have been found to see the blood pressure which people can keep to the in their homes and regularly check their blood pressure or BP as it is not good for health so okay friends these are some of the this was your chapter so these are the some of the questions of your chapter you may have to understand this uh, this your chapter you may uh, the topics I have explained and write the answer for these questions so uh, once again I will say this is ICSC's biology chapter so 8th standard biology first chapter ICSC medium uh, so other medium student please don't watch this video I am saying you first only I said you first only now also I am saying so in this chapter the syllabus you learned in this chapter is you learned about sorry you learned about the blood uh, about, uh, about the heart different types of blood and pulse rate you learned how it is sent out to the other parts of the body blood is sent and how it is taken and how what happens in if you in the other parts of the body uh, how it is taken and about the blood more you learned in the water blood so this was your chapter the blood the circulatory power of fluid in our body so okay friends i will see you in my next video explaining the another chapter of your eight standard biology icsc medium any other chapter any other subject not only biology so till then take care have a nice day and bye my dear friends